What are you doing, you moron? Get the food out now! Are you trying to embarrass us? My husband shouted at me in the kitchen and went into the living room with a bottle of wine. I was hurriedly serving food on plates, fighting back tears. Then, someone came into the kitchen to replace my husband. Janelle, don't tell me you prepare all this by yourself. I replied to him, who was completely astonished by the situation. Yeah, that's what I always do. Hearing my words, he, my father-in-law, got angry. He was red in the face as he went to the living room. Alec, what the hell are you doing? You stupid son. My name is Janelle. I'm a 30-year-old office worker. My husband Alec and I have been married for two years. Delicious! Janelle, you are a genius cook! My husband always praised my homemade cooking. Seeing my husband eating my cooking always makes me happy. What kind of meal shall I cook tomorrow? On my next day off, I may try these new dishes. I used to cook a lot because I lived alone for a long time. But it wasn't until I got married that I began to cook elaborate meals like this. I think cooking skills will improve when there is someone to eat. My husband is not good at housework, so I do all the cleaning and laundry, including cooking. He never complains when I do the chores on my own time, which helps me a lot. And we go for a drive or shopping, my husband drives the car and carries my luggage like a gentleman. In this way, we can divide our roles as a couple. I think we have a very balanced life. However, a disturbing shadow has crept into our happy married life. Dad's going away for a while. Oh, really? For how long? I think he said about a year, but he's out of the country. It's too far for him to come home easily. I see. So your mother will be living alone during that time? Yeah. Speaking of my mom, I have a proposal. How about we move into my parents with my mom? You mean we live with your mom? Yeah. I'm worried about her being alone, you know? And you would have less housework with my mom's help. I think it's not a bad idea. What do you think? That's true. I think it's a good idea. Actually, I have just been selected as a team member for a big project at work. So, I was grateful for the reduced burden of housework. And I didn't have any bad impression with my mother-in-law. I thought it would be a great advantage for us to live together. I agreed to move in with her. But this was to be the biggest mistake of my life. Hey, Janelle, how long are you going to stay in bed? That's what my mother-in-law said, waking me up. I went to the living room with a sleepy head. Um, it's only five in the morning. Why did you wake me up? What are you talking about? You have to prepare our breakfast and lunch and clean the bathroom and toilet. You have to be up by now. Are you saying you want me to do all that in the morning? Of course. That's what you're supposed to do as a wife. My mother-in-law made such an unreasonable demand of me out of the blue. If I express my opinion, it will be reciprocated many times over. It would be mentally exhausting, so I had no choice but to comply. I had to finish all my chores before going to the office. I made breakfast and lunch for them. Then I would go to work exhausted. 
When I return home extra exhausted, my mother-in-law orders me, "You late? Make dinner now, you moron!" She's always cursing me. This situation started the moment I moved in with her. I was very depressed. I couldn't concentrate on my work, living like this. I'm working on a big project that involves promotion. I couldn't take it anymore, so I talked to my husband about it. You said I would have less housework if we lived together. Instead of decreasing, it's increasing. When I said that, my husband looked annoyed. What? If you don't like it, why don't you just leave it to my mom? I tried and I can't. That's why I am asking you to do something about it. Don't drag me into your problems. I'm busy with work, you know. I am busy with work too. What? You and I have different responsibilities. Woman can take time off any time, but man can't. Yes, you can. What era are you living? You're mocking me. Shut up! I don't want to talk to you anymore. I didn't realize he was so old-fashioned. I thought he would be more flexible and understanding. I was quite disappointed that my husband was unreliable. My mother-in-law continues to behave in an unmanageable manner and treats me like a slave. I wonder if we can stay married in such a state. I even began to have such a fear, and my mother-in-law did not only tease me about my housework. When will I see my grandchildren? Our neighbor's daughter has already given birth. I've got a baby gift for her, but I like to be on the receiving end of the baby gifts. I'm sorry, but my husband and I are trying, you know. What do you mean you're trying, but you can't do it? Doesn't that mean you were defective? I was surprised at my mother-in-law who made such a statement. What are you saying? Are you serious? Because you know, there is nothing wrong with my son. Then it's all your fault, isn't it? What a terrible judgment and accusation! Does this person have no morals? I had come to completely dislike my mother-in-law, and I was disillusioned with my husband, who was not helping me at all, even though I was in so much trouble. If anything more happened to me, we might not be staying together. That's what I thought, and it happened sooner than I thought. Janelle, I'm throwing a birthday party for my mom this Saturday. Birthday party? Saturday? Yeah, we'll invite some of Mom's friends. We need to treat them to some food and stuff. So, make sure you're ready. Wait a minute. It's too sudden. You can't ask me to do something like that. I'll be back from my business trip on Friday, the night before. Good. You'll be back in time. So it's perfect. That's not what I mean. I'm gonna come home super tired from the business trip. Got it? And you're asking me to prepare for a birthday party the very next day? What? Are you disobeying me? I'm your husband, you know. Damn it! Mom's right. You are useless. You can't even have a baby. And all you do is complain. Don't you ever think of taking good care of us? Wait a minute. Do you have any idea how much I do for this family? I don't need that kind of selfish remark. Well, if you say you can't do it, because you are a loser, I don't blame you. Don't blame us for your inability to do anything. What's with you? The way you say it. Well, whatever. 
I get it. You want me to do it, right? How many people are coming to the party anyway? How much food do we have to prepare? I don't know. Maybe about twenty people, including us. Wait, twenty? That many? Don't complain now. You said you'll do it. Make sure you prepare the food properly. My husband said that and went to his room. Shoot, I have no idea that so many people would come. I immediately regretted that I had agreed to do it out of anger, but I said I would do it, so I had to do it. My mother-in-law and my husband pissed me off, but the people who were invited were blameless. So I decided to prepare the food a little in advance. That way, I only have to heat it on the day of the party. That alone would take a lot off my plate. While I was preparing dinner, I made a few dishes that would last a while and put them in the fridge. Then Thursday came, and I went on a business trip. When I got home Friday night, I opened the fridge. And exclaimed, "Hey, Halleck, what happened to the dish that wasn't here?" Well, we ate it all. What? Seriously? That was for the party. Oh, who knows? I put a sign on the container saying it was for the party. See? I don't remember that. It's too much trouble to cook, and it's easier to, and it's easier to eat when there's something edible in the fridge. My husband didn't seem offended, and my mother-in-law blamed me even more. Don't be stupid, Janelle. Were you thinking to serve leftover food at a birthday party? We are having guests over, so make it on the day of the party. But. I haven't even gone shopping yet. Then why don't you go tomorrow morning? Even elementary school kids could understand that. An elementary school student wouldn't understand how hard it is to buy ingredients and cook for twenty people the morning after a tiring business trip. For God's sake! I wanted to say that back to them. But I was mentally and physically exhausted, so I decided to go to bed as soon as possible to recover from the fatigue. I woke up very early the next morning. Of course, neither my husband nor my mother-in-law helped me with anything. I ended up going back and forth between the supermarket and home three times. It took me about two hours just to do the shopping, and then I had to rush to start preparing the food for the party. I whipped my body, exhausted from the business trip, into shape and proceeded with the cooking. But of course, since I was doing it alone, it was going to take a long time, and since I was more tired than usual, my pace was even slower. I managed to roughly prepare the food, but it was already past dusk before I could finish the serving and other finishing touches. Guests arrived one after another. My mother-in-law greets the guests in the living room with a smile. When she came to the kitchen in between, she glared at me and shouted abusive words at me. Hey, Janelle, how damn are you? The guests are already here, so hurry up! If you have time to get mad like that, at least help with the last dish. I can't help thinking, but my mother-in-law just complains and goes back to the living room. And not only my mother-in-law, but also my husband came into the kitchen and yelled at me. What are you doing, you moron? Get the food out now! Are you trying to embarrass us? I couldn't stand by and let him call me moron. What's with you? Really? I'm tired from a business trip, and 
and went out shopping for groceries and booze all by myself. And I'm cooking for 20 people all by myself. I don't need you to tell me I'm a moron. How dare you? What? You said you could do it, so I let you do it. If you can't, you should have said you couldn't. You useless piece of shit. I should have never married a bitch like you. He cursed me in the kitchen and went into the living room with a bottle of wine. How could he say such a thing? I deeply regret marrying an abusive husband like him. I was hurriedly serving food on plates, fighting back tears. Then, someone came into the kitchen to replace my husband. It was my father-in-law. Oh, hi. Long time no see. I didn't know you were home. Yes, I just came in. What's more? What's going on? I heard Alec yelling at you. Are you okay? I came straight to the kitchen right after I dropped my stuff off. I'm sorry. Did you hear our fighting in the living room? Well, I don't know. I haven't been over there yet. My father-in-law froze mid-sentence when he saw the dishes laid out in the kitchen. Janelle? Don't you tell me you prepared all this by yourself. Yes. It's ready when I serve them on the plates. No one else helped you? I nodded silently at my father in those words. No way. This is... I replied to him, who was completely astonished by the situation. But that's what I always do. What do you mean by always. I decided to take this opportunity to tell my father-in-law the whole story about my mother-in-law's bullying, my husband's not taking my side at all. I told him, I told him about all the things that had happened since I moved in with my mother-in-law. When my father-in-law heard what I said, his face turned red and he went to the living room. I hurried the leave followed behind him. My mother-in-law's face lit up when she noticed my father-in-law's appearance. Oh my god, honey, you're here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my husband. He came all the way home today to celebrate my birthday. My mother-in-law smiled and introduced her husband to everyone. The guests noticed that my father-in-law had a scarily look on his face, so they kept silent. Then, my father-in-law approached my mother-in-law and questioned her. Is it true that you were using Janelle? My mother-in-law was in a panic. Hey, what's the matter with you? Use her? I would never do such a thing. You know that. Then why is Janelle preparing the food for this huge banquet all by herself? According to what I heard, Janelle came back from her business trip last night. But this morning, she went to the store to buy all the food and drinks for herself. And she's been cooking all day. If this isn't using her for your convenience, what is it? But it's... My mother-in-law became upset when my father-in-law questioned her. Then, my husband rushed in to stop my father-in-law. Dad, stop it. You're embarrassed. You're embarrassing us in front of the guests. My husband says so. But to be honest, he was the one who should be embarrassed. And my father-in-law felt the same way. How dare you can say anything here? Your first priority should be your wife, shouldn't it? Why can't you help Janelle when she is being bullied? Because it's their problem. It's none of my business. None of your business? What the hell are you doing? 
I can't believe you are my son. Janelle chose you to marry and became a part of this family. I feel sorry for her that her husband is a worthless man like you. What? You don't have to say that. Besides, our marriage is going well. Right, Janelle? Right? We fight sometimes, but we get along. I was disgusted by my husband saying such a thing. You say that because you are embarrassed to be blamed here. If you think we get along, or that things are going well, then you are just insane. I've talked to you repeatedly about your mother's bullying, and you've never taken my side, never done anything with it. And you put me in charge of all the preparations for today's party. You blame me to the point of insanity when things don't go as planned. How can anyone stay married to such a man? I can't. I don't want to see your face or your mother's face ever again. Let's get a divorce. As I said this, my father-in-law continued. You betrayed your wife. You must agree to this divorce, son. I am totally ashamed that this happened while I was away. I've reached my limit. I'm also divorcing you. To my surprise, my father-in-law also gave my mother-in-law a divorce on the spot. What? No way! No, no, no! Please, don't do this! You are not interested in me. You are only interested in how much money I make. I won't tolerate it anymore. Get the hell out of my house. For those of you who've gathered here, you're going to eat the food Janelle cooked. She worked so hard on it. It's not a birthday party anymore, but a dinner party. If you, if you two are here, the food will not as good as it could be. Get out of here, now. Both my husband and my mother-in-law were shaken up by my father-in-law's anger and rushed out of the house. After that, I finished preparing the food and served it to the people who had gathered there. Everyone praised my cooking, saying it was delicious. I felt like my hard work was rewarded just by that alone. After the guests left, my father-in-law and I went to the city office to prepare for divorce. After a while, my husband and mother-in-law came home looking all frightened. When we confronted them with the divorce application, they burst into tears and clung to us. But our resolve is now unwavering. Plus, I had physical evidence. When my mother-in-law, when my mother-in-law and my husband started abusing me in the kitchen, one of the relatives who were at the party saw us. He felt sorry for me and recorded what my mother-in-law and my husband said. I got the audio data and decided to use it to demand for alimony. He didn't think I had such evidence, so he gave up and gave in to my demands. He realized that it would cost him more money to go to court. Thus, my father-in-law and I were able to divorce each other's lousy partners. And I was able to get my husband to pay me alimony. My ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law are now living together. But after the party, their relatives and friends found out how badly they've treated me and they were completely isolated from the family. Well, it's none of my business anymore. I think they deserve it. Meanwhile, I am living a comfortable single life by myself in a nice apartment near the office. The project was success, and I got a promotion. I am going to devote myself to my work for a while.